Hallelujah! Welcome, beloved, by the grace of God, we have gathered again. It's day 60 and 7, and I am your host, Malcolm David. It's a day 100, for the journey of 150 days of Psalms, and it's day 67, by the grace of God. So I welcome you, get your Bibles, get your notebooks, you know, look out for this wonderful thing and share the gospel because the Lord has gathered us here for a purpose. Hallelujah. Let's pray as we commence. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, open our eyes. Pray for yourself. Tell the Lord, open my eyes that I may see wonderful things out of your law. Say it again. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus. We come to Psalm 67. In the name of Jesus. Psalm, 60, Psalm 67, a Psalm of David. Psalm 67, the main thing that if you told you are to forget anything else that you're going to hear today is that everyone should praise God. Everybody should praise God. Everyone should praise God. So let's proclaim Psalm 67 in the mighty name of Jesus. For the director of music with stringed instruments, a Psalm, a song, Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the people justly and guide the nations of the earth. Psalm 67 verse 5. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest. And the Lord, our God, will bless you. God will bless you. And all the ends of the earth will fear him. Mm -hmm. Beloved, the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow. What a blessing to know that everyone should praise God. The situation of the songwriter on this particular psalm is that is you know is to for blessing the people. The writer promised to praise and sacrifice to God because God had always remained faithful. One observation I want you to have is that God is worthy of praise. He not only grants us our life, but he guides us as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, beloved, we need to be inspired because we are living in a time when more and more Christians direct their prayers to the Lord. I don't remember the occasions in the scriptures where people prayed to the Son of God, so I suggest we follow his instructions. When Jesus taught his followers to pray, it was always to the Father. <laughs> But the beauty of it is that the Father and the Son are one. When we, we pray unto the Father, when we say, may all the peoples praise you, O oh God, may all the peoples praise you, is that is a time that whereby we are looking to God as our Father. Our Father, more than a friend. In his mind, it will help you praying to picture him in your mind as Father, more than friend, or more than just a distant deity. You must know that God desires us to be with him. Beloved, make this your thank God day. Focus on the blessings, whether they are as simple as a beautiful tree or as profound as peace of mind. Perhaps you can thank him for your older neighbor, your stubborn child, your, your, your fuel guzzler, if you have one, your boss. Thank God for all things. You can thank God for everything. Praise awaits you, O God, in Zion. To you, all men will come. From the book of Psalm 65, we see God being mentioned like this everywhere. Beloved, today's combination is a beautiful one. We have Psalm 67, Psalm, Proverbs 26, we have Ecclesiastes 12, we have Leviticus 27, we have and the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, the hall of fame of faith in the name of Jesus. And then we have Ephesians, Ephesians 1 again, and then we conclude in the book of Revelation, chapter 5. So I welcome you. It's Sabbath. 
It's Sabbath today and we bless the name of the Lord for our brothers and sisters in Israel. We give glory to God even for all the Jewish people around the world. And also we thank God for the peace of Jerusalem. Gadol Adonai, praise be to our God. Great is our God. Sarah Lieberman, we give him praise. Hallelujah. We are heading out now. The book of Proverbs. It says, says in the in the in the Hebrew, great is our God. In the city of our God. I will come to the altar of God with praise. I will bring the fruit of my lips as an offering to you. Hallelujah. Aguri. Hallelujah! What a joy, beloved, to come into the presence of God with joy and rejoicing. It is fitting for everyone to praise God. Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. That's where we are. Proverbs 26. It's a very powerful proverb for us to know certain things. And it's a joy that the word of God is active. It's living. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And right now as I read it out to you, there are certain circumstances in your life that are just aligning to the purpose of God. It's a very prophetic time and we thank God even as we continue to hear the words of Jesus. So it says in verse 1, Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, honor is not fitting for a fool. Verse 2, Proverbs chapter 26. Like a flattering sparrow or a like a flattering sparrow or a dwarting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. Verse 3. A whip for the horse, a halter for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you will be like him. Verse number five. Answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. Verse 6. Like cutting off one's feet or drinking violence is the sending of a message by the hand of a fool. Verse 7. Like a lame man's legs that hang limp is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. 8. Like the tying of a stone, like tying, of, tying a stone in a sling is the giving of honor. To a fool means that if you put a stone with a sling when you throw it will just fall so that's the way when you honor a fool verse number nine says like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the hand of a fool like an archer who wounds at random is he who hires a fool or any passerby verse number 11 as a dog returns to its vomit so a fool repeats his folly Verse 12. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for that man. Verse 13. The sluggard says there's a lion in the road. A fierce lion roaming the streets. Beloved, we cannot allow ourselves to be sluggards. Even praise, you can be a sluggard of praise. You don't even want to praise God. You feel tired. You enter the church service when they are singing praises and your hands are like this. I wonder what kind of those Christians, what do they come to church to do? I Honestly, I wonder, why did you come? If you come to the house of God, the prayer leader there is leading people to dancing for God, singing for God. But you're just like this waiting for it to end so that you can sit down and do your due diligence of you are in church and go away. This is the person known as the sluggard who says there's a lion outside in the road. A fierce lion roaming the streets. Sluggard. Too tired to pray, too lazy to do the things of the Spirit. This is the sluggard. 
Say the sluggard says there's a lion in the road. <laughs> a fierce lion. Ah, this week I've been so tired, so busy. You don't have time to pray. You don't have time to fellowship. You don't have time to do the things of God. Watch out. Because the sluggard says the same things. And as a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. Yes, I know that we want to rest and we have all those things. But in the realm of the spirit, the term sluggard is dangerous. You should never accept yourself to find yourself in the place called a sluggard. Listen to verse 15. The sluggard, eh, the lazy one, buries his hand in the dish. He's too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. You need to know that staying in the things of God and reading the Bible and praying and loving your neighbor and applying the scripture will definitely bring you to the place where it's worth it. Because the sluggard is a person who you don't want to be associated with. A sluggard will not praise God. A sluggard will not be able to uh, share the gospel with other people. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He's too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. He might actually complain and say that the spoon is too heavy. You don't know how this spoon is heavy. You don't know. I work on the eighth floor and the lift is not working. I have to walk all the day to the eighth floor. The moment you have those things, remember the hand of the sluggard is in the bridge and he's getting too lazy to put it back into his mouth. Verse 16. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who answer discreetly. Like one who seizes a dog by the ears is a passerby who meddles in a quarrel not his own. Like a madman shooting firebrands of deadly arrows is a man who deceives his neighbor and says, I was only joking. Verse 20. Like wood, like without wood, a fire goes out. Without a gossip, a quarrel dies down. Verse 21. As charcoal to embers and as wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome man for kindling strife. Verse 22. The words of a gossip are like choice muscles. They go down to a man's innermost parts. Verse 23. Like a coating of glaze over earthenware, a fervent lips with an evil heart. Verse 24. A malicious man disguises himself with lips, but his heart he harbors deceit. Though his speech is charming, don't believe him, for seven abominations are filling his heart. Verse 26, his malice may be concealed by deception, but his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Verse 27, if a man digs a pit, he will fall into it. If a man rolls a stone, it will roll back on him. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Hey. This is Proverbs 26. Beloved, I encourage you every day, soak in to the word of Proverbs. Because a word for the wise is enough. Ecclesiastes 12. Remember your youth in the days. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Mm. Remember your creator. In the days of your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Because the sun and the light and the moon and the stars go dark before they go dark. And the clouds return after the rain. Ecclesiastes 12 verse number 3. When the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop. When the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim. When the doors of the streets are closed and the sound of grinding fades. When men rise at the sound of the birds but all their songs grow faint. When men are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets. When the almond tree blossoms. And the grasshopper drags himself along, and desire no longer is stirred. Then man goes to his eternal home, and mourners go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed, and the bowl, the golden bowl, is broken. Let me read from the century English version 
Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 6. I want us to hear in a different way. It says, Soon your life will snap like a silver chain or break like a golden bow. You will be like a broken pitcher at a spring or broken wheel at a well. You will turn back into the dust and the earth again, but your spirit will return to the God who gave it. Everything is useless, the teacher says. That everything is useless. The problems of the old age, because old age, like I told you, is 15 years from now. All of us 15 years from now will be a little bit old. For the 15 year old, you are going to be 30. For the 10 year old, you're going to be 25. For the 60 year old, you're going to be 75. For the 75, you're going to be 90. So there's no time you are old. Old is 15 years from now. I like telling people this because it's the truth. You are never too old for God. You are always in your youth until you finish your work here on the earth. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 12 verse number 9. Not only was the teacher wise, but he also imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. The teacher searched to find just the right words, and what he wrote was upright and true. The words of the wise are like gods. They are collected sayings like firmly embedded nails, given by one shepherd. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them or of making many books, there is no end. And much study, where is the body? Now all has been said, all has been heard, sorry, verse 13. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or it is bad. So now the best thing is plant more good by praising God more often. Everyone should praise God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Hallelujah! Today we are coming to the end of the book of Leviticus. What a joy, beloved of the Lord. We are coming to the end of Leviticus and we are going to the book of Leviticus chapter 27. Leviticus 27. Ladies and gentlemen, we glorify the name of the Lord for he has helped us to come to the end of the book of Leviticus. Proclaiming it like Ezra every single day. We have gone through, you know, some tough patches where we didn't know how do we apply this now until the Holy Spirit himself enabled us to learn that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's who he is. Leviticus 27 verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, if anyone makes a special vow, to dedicate peoples, persons to the Lord by giving equivalent laws, uh, by giving equivalent values. Set the value of the male between the ages of 20 and 60 at 50 shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. You notice that Jesus was sold for 30 pieces of silver. In the book of the New Testament. Now here is showing that there is a value that was set for male between the ages of 20 and 60 at 50 shekels of silver according to the sanctuary shekel. You see this? According to the sanctuary shekel. This is something so profound because it shows that the church, the sanctuary, was setting the standard of the economy. This is like saying, according to the church dollar, the value was being done according to the economy of the sanctuary, not the economy of the world. So set the value of the man between ages of 20 and 60 at 50 shekels of silver, according to the sanctuary shekel. Why? Because there are other shekels that were not of the proper value. That's why the Lord was saying that he have all dishonest scales. In the book of Exodus, chapter 30, 
verse um, 13, Exodus 30 verse 13. It says this words, each one of who each one who crosses over to already uh, to those already counted is to give a half a shekel according to the sanctuary shekel which weighs 20 geras the half shekel is an offering to the lord there is a standard in the sanctuary of the lord and then it says and if it is a female set her value at 30 shekels it is if it is a person between the ages of 5 and 20 set the value of a male to 20 shekels and the value of a female at 10 shekels if it is a person between the ages hallelujah thank you jesus we are in the book of leviticus 27 leviticus 27 the last chapter of Leviticus. Then we commence numbers tomorrow. And then we are moving on like that. Slowly. By the time we are done with 150 days of Psalms. We, uh, season 5. We will definitely have covered the Bible. The entire Bible in two years. The New Testament. We've already done it. We are think on the third time of the New Testament. But the entire Bible from Genesis. Coming down. Is now what we are doing. Deuteronomy. We read it in season 4. We are now going to go as the Lord helps us in the name of Jesus. So Deuteronomy 27 is where we are. It says in verse number 8. If anyone making the vow is too poor to pay, the specified amount is to present the person to the priest who will set the value for him according to what the man making the vow can afford. If what he vowed is an animal that is acceptable as an offering to the Lord, such an animal is given to the Lord becomes holy. He must not exchange it or substitute a good one for a bad one, a bad one for a good one. If he should substitute one animal for another, both it and the substitute become holy. If what he vowed is ceremonially unclean animal, one that is not acceptable as an offering to the Lord, the animal must be presented to the priest who will judge its quality as good or bad. Whatever value the priest then sets, that is what it will be. Now, let me show you some other revelation here. Whatever value that the priest sets is what it will be. So we are the ones to praise our God all the time, continually, and also set values. Hallelujah. Verse 14 of Leviticus 27. If a man dedicates his house as something holy to the Lord, the priest will judge its quality as good or bad. Whatever value the priest then sets, so it will remain. Verse 15. If the man who dedicates his house redeems it, he must add a fifth to its value, and the house will again become his. If a man dedicates to the Lord part of his family land, its value is to be set according to the amount of seed required for it. Fifty shekels of silver to a homer of barley seed. If he dedicates his field during the year of Jubilee, the value that has been set remains. But if he dedicates this field after the Jubilee, the priest will determine the value according to the number of years that will determine that will remain until the next year of the jubilee and it is set value will be reduced leviticus 27 19 if a man who dedicates his field wishes to redeem it he must add a fifth of its value and the field will again become his verse 20 if however he does not redeem the field or it has sold it he has sold it to someone else it can never be redeemed because the property uh, it can never be redeemed. When the field is released in the Jubilee, it will become holy like a field devoted to the Lord. It will become the property of the priests. Verse number 22. If a man dedicates to the Lord a field he has bought, which is not part of his family land, 
the priest will determine its value up to the year of Jubilee. And the man must pay its value on that day as something holy to the Lord. In the year of Jubilee, the field will revert to the person from whom he bought it and the one whose land it was. Every value is to be set according to the sanctuary shekels, 20 geras to the shekel. No one, however, may dedicate the firstborn of an animal since the firstborn already belongs to the Lord. Whether an ox or a sheep, it is the Lord's. Listen to me, firstborns. The challenge you face is because you don't understand that first of all you belong to the Lord already. The firstborn is the Lord's. So parents who don't understand that their, their firstborns are, you know, holy unto the Lord will not give the spiritual leadership to their children and their children will make a lot of mistakes and they will find a lot of spiritual challenges. If you are a firstborn and you are listening to me, I want you to know you belong to the Lord already. You need to know these things so that now as a firstborn, you set your face to seek God for the Lord Jesus has already redeemed you. We need to correct some things. You know, I was reading some posts on the Facebook and I noticed someone writing, a, a respectable man of God. He says, I greeted the hand of the apostle and I have tapped into the grace. Ah, I said, this is witchcraft, my friend. How can you tap into the grace by greeting somebody's hand? The grace of God is given through faith and faith alone. So please don't mistake people. If at all you are going to give a gift of money to a man, Give a gift of, go, of, uh, of money to the man. Not that I want to tap in the grace by my gift. God's gift you cannot buy with money, my friend. But to the detriment of many, instead of giving the praise to God, we give the praise to men. We are praise creatures. Our job is to praise men instead of praising God. There we fall into trouble. You see, the firstborn already is the Lord's. Whether you are Christian or not, you belong to the Lord. Whether that puppy you have just bought and then it gives its first litter, all the firstborns, they belong to the Lord. So here we are being taught that no, that no one may dedicate the firstborn of an animal since the firstborn already belongs to the Lord. Whether an ox or a sheep, it is the Lord's. If it is one of the unclean animals, he may buy it back at its set value, according to a fifth of the value to it. If it does not redeem it, it is to be sold at its set value. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that word. I receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I receive instruction from you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Leviticus 27 verse 28. It says, but nothing that a man owns and devotes to the Lord, but nothing that a man owns and devotes to the Lord, whether man or, or, or animal or family land may be sold or redeemed. Everything so devoted is most holy to the Lord. No person devoted to destruction may be ransomed. He must be put to death. Now, just look at that in Leviticus 27 and verse 29. And see what that verse says. It says, No person devoted to destruction may be ransomed. He must be put to death. Now, let me bring you back to Proverbs chapter 26, verse 2. It says that a curse without a cause does not alight. Oh, Jesus, my God, thank you, Lord. My God. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I receive divine instruction. I thank God. A curse without a cause will not alight. I decree upon you. Any curse that may be upon your life, it has no cause if you are in the Lord Jesus. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. May that curse that has been released your way, it will not have any cause in your life anymore. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
It says this, no person devoted to destruction may be ransomed. He must be put to death. Listen to verse 30. A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. If a man redeems any of his tithe, he must add a fifth of the value to it. The entire tithe of the herd and the flock, every tenth animal that passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. He must not pick out the good from the good. Uh, he must not pick out the good from the bad or make any substitution. If he does make any if, if he does make a substitution, both the animal and its substitute become holy and cannot be redeemed. These are the commands the Lord gave Moses on Mount Sinai for the Israelites. That marks the end of Leviticus. Beloved of the Lord, the Bible is not a novel. You cannot be able to say I'm reading from cover to cover. You must be led by the Holy Spirit. As we read here, the Lord began to show me different things about my personal life. I don't have to tell you. Those are my personal revelations. God has given me instruction for things I must do. So I pray for you today. May you hear his voice. May your eyes be open to know that he's speaking to you. And know that you know that you know that you know that you know he has done it. Ephesians is coming up, but we are going to the book of Hebrews. What a joy. The book of Hebrews. That's where we are going in the name of Jesus. Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 11. My goodness. This is a chapter that should be welcomed. <laughs> it's a chapter that you need to memorize. It's a chapter that you need to know. When you, you, you are held somewhere and you are said, give us the, the what does uh, 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 Hebrews 11 say? You must know what Hebrews says 11. Listen to this. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commanded, he was commended as a righteous man. Ah, Proverbs, Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, my goodness. The VIP section of Hebrews. Because this is where I come to bring you some wonderful knowledge. That praise unto God comes from your revelation of him. That's why you see people struggling to sing in church. When the people are singing, others are looking around. Others are, you know, removing their mobile phone. I don't know what, what mobile phone. Praising God. I used to be in that department until the Lord delivered me. So what are you, you are recording for? Maybe if you are in the media team, that's advisable. But if you are coming to the house of God to worship God and praise Him, you must be full of faith. Ah, faith. That now when I'm praising God, but there are some songs I will not dance to anyway. There are some songs that actually are not even scriptural. You need to know you don't need music to praise God. But music is part of praising God. Because there are some songs we don't really praise God, really. We are just sensual we are just in a club's environment we are dancing like the world moving west going down ah wait who told you god is praised like that yes david praised until his clothes fell off but the pattern of his praise was not music that was worldly the pattern of david's praise was not some music that was worldly i don't want to go into music ah uh -uh. i don't want to discuss that area there are so many people who have explained this thing and we know a word is enough for the wise. That worldliness, we cannot love world. We cannot praise God like the world does. Eh? Everybody will put your hand up. Yeah, put what? Eh? Then you don't know who you are singing to. You are singing to 
the musician, not to Jesus. So when you are applying the faith, oh my God, you love to stop me now and say, oh, now let's stop praising. Because for me, the beat might be there, but I'm not going to be dancing to the beat. I will be praising God. And that's where you need to come. By faith. It must be by faith. Everything you do must be by faith, beloved. By faith, we understand. And also there was an era that came in the early years where people were told word of faith. And they began to run in that direction, all of them. Many books were written and many, many things and a lack of balance. Remember the word of God tells us. A man, a wise man will avoid all extremes. So let's go to the whole of faith here and listen more. He said in verse, number 30, in verse number 3, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. In the book of Genesis, chapter 5, verse 21 to 24, Enoch walked with God and he was no more. God took him. Enoch never died. If you are reading CRE, they would ask you, who did not die in the Bible? And then you will write Enosh for my students. Let me encourage you, young boys and girls and young men who are now in school holidays. This is the best time to study the scripture, to know it more. Because the moment you know the scripture, God will begin to reveal to you the deep things of the spirit. Hmm. Hmm. Verse 6 says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. This word, earnestly seek him, what does it mean? Ask the Holy Spirit, show me, Lord. Teach me to earnestly seek you. Write that down somewhere as some homework. Help me to earnestly seek you. Verse 7, it says, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. There is some inheritance that comes by faith. When you choose to do something by faith, I like telling young people about how I organized for, how I started my wedding. And the Lord told me, you know, I began to pray earnestly and told God, I want a wife. I don't want a girlfriend. I don't want a boy. I don't want to date. I, I had no money for dating anyway. I just, God, and my father just passed on. I had only one father in heaven. Beloved, the wedding on February 5th that year was done by faith. Until our, our friends and relatives saw, hey, these people now are very, very serious. They began to say, hey, let us go now and support it. Because they thought, for me, it was so clear in my mind. We have the pastor, we have the church. Even before we thought about it, the church was supposed to charge us some money for, you know, cleaning and all this after the church. The church even gave and said, this is our offering. You, nobody knew whether I am a man of God or a pastor or what. Nobody knew. I was just a young man, 28 years old. Faith, beloved. And I'm just, I'm so excited this morning because I've seen it in the, in the spirit, what God is doing. By bringing us to Hebrews chapter 11, then faith must manifest. Let me tell you, faith must manifest. Hey, in Masabit, went with some missionaries. Very less this uh, September. Went into Masabit. We are being driven by one brother. And as we were going, the Holy Spirit said to me, stop here. It was a desert, complete desert. I said, let's stop here a little bit. It's midday. We need to pray. 
So the missionary was uh, taking us to the tribe, to the to the inside uko ndani kwa 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 desert. He said, "Okay, let us stop." Cuz even he, he needed to, you know, um get a break a little bit. So we got out of the vehicle. When I got outside, I had never seen so many stones on the ground. Stones, real stones. The whole ground is stones and very hot sand. Not real sand, but it looks like normal red soil, but it's rocky place. So we stopped there, lifted my hands to God. I could feel the breeze of the wind, very strong winds there, praising God and honoring him. I didn't know what exactly the Lord wants me to do. He said, stop here, pray. So we are lifting. So in the vehicle, someone was taking, a, I think, a packet of milk. And when they finished taking the packet of milk, they threw it out of the window. So the Holy Spirit said, no, you must go after that packet. Because that is an area the enemy may accuse you about on this mission. That you have come and you are littering, you are, you are, just, you are just adding on to the lawlessness in the land. Let me tell you something. When you are doing lawless things, like for example, you take trash and you just throw outside. Unakula ndizi, unatupa chini. You promote the spirit of lawlessness that is in that land. If you look at the areas where we have, um, where we have garbage, a lot of garbage dropped all over the place. There is high lawlessness. It's a spirit. When I look at the people of Marsabit, I love them so much. But I see this problem, lawlessness everywhere. Someone will use something, throw it on the, on the road. Say, ah, stop it. They say, ah, county at our funny kazi. The people, they don't want to even clean themselves. They want to throw it there. Next to another church we went, people are throwing it there. One kesha, after finishing, the Lord said, you go out there and clean that street. We are not many, we are about eight people. Went, bought some fuel, and touched all that garbage that was on that road. God gave us about eight souls that day, just there as people were passing. They were telling us, yeah, you're doing a good thing, it's a good thing. Now let me tell you about Masabit again. When we finished, I picked that piece of paper and I told my friends, please, don't throw out papers out of the car when we are together on a mission. Because it's very important that we are Yan is like a military or, 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 uh, operation. So you, you, the military don't go throwing out biscuits. Have you ever seen a, a paper from the military? Written uh, Kenya military on the street. Dumped. None. Because they are disciplined. So we went on into the desert. We continued into the desert. There's no direction. When you look at it, it's just one bright thing. We're just going, 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 going. Then now we reached a place. I saw a tree. The Holy Spirit said, go stop at that tree. There, that one. Don't go into the tribe. We could see the, the villages coming up. Almost a kilometer. Ukonyuma. The Lord says, stop here. I talked to the driver. I said, please, let's stop here. Let us pray under that tree for a little while. So we went to the tree. This I'm talking you about faith now. What faith does. When you believe God. Going to a place you don't believe. You, you don't know where it is. You, I have never gone to Masabit. I didn't know anybody in Masabit that wanted, wanted me to get out of my comfort zone, to take a flight and go. Because that particular mission I had gone by air. Not because of prestige or anything. Just obedience. Nothing else. Beloved, we went under that tree and the Lord said, let us all of us pray in our different dialects. The people who were there, there was someone speaking one language, another one language, another one language. Let us pray in our native language in that land. And these people were from that area. So when they began to speak, the Holy Spirit quickened me. And he told me, this place is an altar. Where you are standing here, this is where they determine issues to do with the, that village you are seeing there. So here, capture it by faith. Pray. So we began to pray. We are praying. These are the people, they are feeling such a breakthrough. They don't know what's happening. But it's different because they feel like we are wasting time. We should be going to the village. Beloved, while we were praying, we just saw in the distance a herd of goats. The herd of goats was coming. And we could not see who was with the goats. But the goats were just coming straight towards the tree. 
they were all walking towards the tree. Beloved, then we noticed, oh, there was a small boy with the tree, with the goats. Then a little ma another little woman, very short woman, a mother. She was also with the goats. Apparently, these goats belonged to the, that village. And they were like from five families. Many goats. The goats were coming towards us. Literally. It was noonday. So the sun was hot on them, I believe. And the Holy Spirit also was shepherding them to come up to us. When they came, I told the people, it is well. These goats have been cut. They have just been drawn by the anointing. So let us pray more. By the time we were finishing, the lady reached us and the small boy. The small boy had a very old bottle and the bottle had no water. We had the only water we found in the shop were nine bottles. Only nine bottles of 500 ml. And we are going in the desert. Relief is not what the people need in the desert first. They need the gospel. They need the gospel, beloved. With the gospel, the Lord will sustain them. Beloved, I shared with them the water. And we prayed. One of the ladies was from another faith. She was not a Christian. And this missionary knew her because she lost her faith. She was a former Christian, but she changed her faith and began. And you know, there, it must have been, they openly become different religious people. This says, I am Christian. The other one says, I'm the other tribe. I am this and that. Beloved, it was by faith that we entered that town. I have photographs. Maybe I'll, one of these days I'll tell you this story again. This particular time, right there, the missionary is looking at me with a holy fear. Who is this man? Because while we were there, five other women came from the village, walking. Did you know what? Those women did not just come by themselves. There was a diviner inside that camp, where that village, who said there is trouble at that tree. You see that car? Maybe there's somebody sick. Because the Lord could not allow them to know what we are doing. These five women came. We said to them, I said to them, I told my interpreter, please tell them exactly what I'm saying. I said, I want to come for tea in your house. I said to one lady, I don't know her, but the Holy Spirit said this one. She has faith. This one is a woman of God. She does not know even about salvation or anything, but somehow, somehow, there is a connection she has with heaven. I'm telling you, beloved of the Lord, before even I continue reading this book of Hebrews, I'm just babbling because of the knowledge of what faith does. This woman, I told her, you're making us tea. She just said yes. Then we walked together. The driver and the missionary, they followed us in the car. For us, we walked. We were taken in, walking. We walked into the town. We walked in there. Meaning that the evil observers and the diviners that were trying to look, who are these people? They knew we were people of peace because we have come back being led forward by the women of the town. There are about 34 manyatas there, divided according to religion. One belongs to the son of the bond woman, the other one belongs to the Lord. But I said, we are going in the name of Jesus. We are not going to ask, are you rich religion? Are you Christian? Are you Muslim? No. We go in, as the Lord says. So when we went to the house of this woman, this woman had a little fireplace. And she doesn't know English. She doesn't know Swahili. But we were welcomed in. She was a rich woman. Because inside that manyata, outside just looks like pieces of cloth and leather. But inside the house, there was space. There was big, big space. And you could see that from the way it is, even if it is not expensive things you see out there, the house was of an organized person and somebody who is doing well. Apparently, they, they have somebody even working in the government and they, they have that as their son. As she was a widow. We got in, she began a fire. Beloved... It's not fitting for an old man to enter the house of a woman in that culture. But that day, the Lord helped us. This missionary we had broke that tradition and entered that house. We had tea. The fire was built immediately. After that, anybody and everybody that came across us was getting saved. Everybody, without, pre without preaching. 
No preaching, nothing, no microphone, nothing. Just asking them to know the Lord and reading for them the scriptures. That nowadays, I do not have a Borana Bible. <laughs> I came to my Facebook and I wrote down, I said, Lord, ah, I would wish to have at least 50 Borana Bibles. One of my friends read that post, called me. He said, let's pray. We prayed in the spirit for almost 30 minutes. That is now the next Tuesday. That was a mission Monday. When we finished like this, he said, the Lord has told me to give you a hundred Bibles. I am in Masabit, he's in Nairobi, there's Bible Society. Between all those three corners, it took faith for the Bibles, first of all, to be purchased, the Bibles to get onto a bus, and the Bibles to get to me before I leave for Nairobi. Beloved, faith is active. It is not dormant. It is not waiting. It, hey, faith is not waiting. Don't say I'm waiting. Bado nangojea. Uh -uh. You only hope. Hope will not get you the job done. So listen more. By faith, verse 7. Noah, when warned about things not seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became heir of a righteousness that comes by faith. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. Verse number 9. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents as he did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him in the same promise. Verse 10. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder was the Lord. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered himself faithful. Who made him, who made the promise? Now, Sarah's barrenness was cured by the faith of Abraham. You too can change somebody's circumstances by believing God at his word. Beloved, God is so good because we were able to get the Bibles on time. The Bibles were able to be transported. The, the way we were sending them, it was a big consignment of 100 copies. The people where we were buying, they were able to put pack them nicely so that for some reason there would be no sabotage of losing the Bibles on the way or being taken to Moyale, which would have meant now we have lost our consignment. But God is merciful. He provided by faith. And we got it. We were able to... Let me tell you, don't we lie to anyone that you need relief fast to take the gospel. God sustains those camels. God sustains those, those people there. Yes, we may give and we will give. But the relief is not what God tells us first. Go ye and take bread and water. It says, go ye first and preach the gospel. I am trusting God that we invade Masabit as many of us with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We go there and praise God in the desert and pray. But it's a place that security-wise, many people are afraid. In fact, there are very few churches there that are going there happy because of the issues that are in the land. But I prophesy to you, Masabit, in the name of Jesus, by faith you will know peace. By faith you will operate at the head and not at the tail. Because God has remembered you in the name of Jesus. Before they cry, there's a drought. The Lord is sending rain. So that that rain will be a testimony that he is God all by himself. He is the God of all creation. He will send rain in season. I pray for you today, my dear brothers and sisters in Marsabit, Mandera, Wajir, Garissa, all these places, Wafugaji, Wote, Wakajado, Nanarok, Nawot, Mufrombo, all the places in Kenya, my country, where we have people who depend on God and have a higher faith because they have animals that they must give pasture. Those animals cannot eat notes, even if you are a billionaire. They can't. You give them shillings, they will not eat shillings. They want pasture. Unless you buy the pasture, then you bring it to them. 
Hebrews 11:11 11, 11 says, "By faith Abraham, even though he was past age, and Sarah herself was barren, he was unable to become a father because he was considered himself faithful, who made the promise." And so, from this one man, he he as good as dead came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand of the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country not of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had an opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when, tested, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice the one and only son. Even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be blessed, will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. By faith, blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob when he was dying because each of um, when he was dying because each of Joseph's sons let me go back when Jacob was dying he blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff by faith Joseph when his end was near spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his sons, about his bones. See, Joseph, if you've read Exodus with us, you notice that when he was about to die, he, he said his bones never to be left in Egypt. So he had faith that one day they will leave that land and they will carry his bones. Verse 23, By faith Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short while. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. Here I show you something. I mentioned to you when you are reading Leviticus that the firstborn belongs to the Lord. But there's something called, and there's someone called the firstborn destroyer. When that firstborn destroyer was released in Egypt, all the firstborns died. Animals, people, they all died. The firstborn destroyer. So by faith you overcome the firstborn destroyer. By faith you overcome challenges, sicknesses, diseases. By faith you ascend. You understand, you know your position, you know where you are, you know where you dwell. Verse 29, by faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. So what caused the nation of Israel to walk on the Red Sea was faith. You need to know that faith is very much active in the Old Testament as it is in the New Testament. And that is what connects the Old and the New Testament into one. The Old has been made obsolete by the New. But it has not been put away. Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. 
the shadow of things to come. Verse 30, by faith the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. Now I want you to look at it, Joshua chapter 6. By faith, what is faith? These people don't know what faith is. But God has said, be silent. Walk silently around these walls. Walk silently. Walk silently. Walk silently along these walls. And as they were walking silently along those walls, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, they are getting tired. They are even wondering, what strategy is this? Day seven. Can you imagine silence for seven days? People are just walking. All you can hear is just shoes. People are just walking. Cows may be mowing. That's the only noise you're hearing. The people are walking around the walls. Maybe they are carrying some chickens. You don't know. Maybe the chickens are the only noise you're hearing. Maybe they have some few dogs. Some few dogs are walking with them. But for seven days, they marched around the city. With huge walls that even the walls themselves could pass chariots could pass on top of the wall of Jericho. Can you imagine that kind of faith that you are just walking around a place? You are not thinking of the strategy. What are we going to use to go through? We are seeing God in wars, many wars. If you look at the wars that have happened on earth, there are so many testimonies about the hand of God. And I feel so excited when I just see God's hand in something. Like when uh, an, an enemy uh, ship goes and runs out of fuel inside in the middle of the ocean and then it's asking for a civilian ship of where they are attacking please help us with some fuel then the civilian ship says i'm sorry we cannot give you some fuel because you are attacking us and they drive away they just continue and they leave those guys there just floating in their big big guns the hand of God is in Ukraine. The hand of God was and is in Israel strongly. On the seventh day, hallelujah, on the seventh day, at the sounding of the trumpet, at the sounding of the shofar, at the sounding, the trumpet sounded. At the trumpet sounded, beloved of the Lord, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. Beloved of the Lord, at the sounding of this trumpet, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, I want you to declare every wall of Jericho around my glory, every wall of Jericho around my glory begin to fall in the name of Jesus. Seven Jericho destroying blasts of the trumpet with everybody shouted and the walls came down. The frequency in the spirit changed. You have seen people seeing such a high sound that glass breaks. This is what it hap this is what happens. The frequency in the realm of the spirit attacked the foundation of Jericho. But there's something, beloved. It is the it is the Israelites that had to go in and destroy every single one of those people in Jericho. Because the, the crying out to the Lord has already given them Jericho. So now they had another job to do, which is to go cutting, killing everything there. Crushing, burning everything. Even their gold, their silver. But there was a man called Akan who stole their devoted things and thereby brought a big curse to the nation of Israel. Joshua chapter 7. Obedience is very key in faith. When God speaks, says do this, you must do it. Even if it does not make sense. You must do it. So it says in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, By faith, the walls of Jericho fell, and the people marched around them, after the people marched around them for seven days. 
By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what shall we say? I don't have time to talk about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, escaped the edge of the sword whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might again bet, they may gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging while still others were chained and put into prison. They were stoned they were sealed into two. They were sewed into two. Do you know what that means? They took Musumeno and cut the person into two. Cut it like this. Cutting with a saw. When the person is alive, they cut it. They were sewn into two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world, the world was not worthy of them. They wandered in the deserts and the mountains and in the caves and in the holes of the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what has been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us they would be made perfect. Hallelujah. We go now to the book of Ephesians. This uh, Hebrews chapter 11, please find time to read it again. Please, 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 please. Read Hebrews 11 again. By faith, God did so many things. In Master Bit, everything that we were doing there is by faith. Everything by faith. Everything. We enter into a place, people whose mind are thought, always think of relief. They always think of what have you brought for us. Now we are taking the gospel without carrying anything. But some buns, we carried some bread, some bread and milk because there was no water. Mm -hmm. We bought much milk than the water. The water had only, they had only, um, they had only nine bottles in that shop. We thought we moved out of town. We thought we'll get to Kumbele Mbele. Hey, we got there, we surprised ourselves. Yo kaduka ilikuwa tuna tupatisa peke yake. Ya maji. The book of Ephesians, chapter 1. I'm so, so excited. I hope you're getting inspired to operate by faith more. Because there is nothing you would come to a place without faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I believe that faith in Jesus is the most powerful thing. The grace of God will begin to flow. The same, same things that you desire to see will come to your, heart, to your life as well. Ephesians 1 verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. In his sight, in love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Verse 6. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head even Christ. In him we were also chosen, 
having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were first who hope in Christ might be the, to the praise of his glory. And you are also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you are marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, whom is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is the body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Hallelujah. We go to Revelation 5. It says, Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writings on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. Verse number three. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and look inside of it. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. That sent out into all the earth. Verse 7. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty and four elders fell down before the throne, before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy. To take the scroll and to open his seals. Because you were slain and by with your blood you purchased men for God. From every tribe and language. People and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priests. To serve our God. And they will reign on the earth. Then I looked. And heard the voice of many angels. Numbering thousands upon thousands. And ten thousands times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the four living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard another creature, and uh, then I heard every creature in heaven and under the earth and on the sea, and all that is in them singing. To him who sits on the throne, 
and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne, and unto the Lamb. Be praise and honor and glory and power forever. Sits on the throne. Revelation 5 13. John the Revelator had every creature in heaven and on earth. What kind of technology is that? That you can hear what is in heaven and you can hear what is on earth and you can hear what is under the earth. May the Lord give us that technology as we praise Him. May He unlock it for you to hear what is on the sea, to hear what is under the earth, to hear what is on the earth, to hear what is in heaven. May God open your ears to hear and all that is in them. To Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb to praise and glory and honor and power forever and ever. Verse 14 says, The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Beloved, this is the end of the proclamation of the word of God. As the Lord has enabled us to read the six pack plus, we read seven chapters of the Bible. By the grace of God, He's helped us. We finished the book of Leviticus the last 27 days. We've been able to do that. And the last 40 days, when since we began, we began with the book of Exodus, which we did 40 days of it, and we went into the book of Exod uh, Leviticus, which is 27 days, and today is day 67, 60 and 7 of Psalms. What a joy to be able to do this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we conclude, the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. So I want you to pray with me this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Feel me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in Jesus name Amen Child of God if you have received the Lord today it will be a great joy to write to us on the numbers plus 254-722-087087 on the WhatsApp platform you can also use the inbox of 150 Days of Psalms I am Malcolm David you can find me on Facebook and you can find me on Instagram as Brother Malcolm David that's a joy and it's a blessing for me to be able to bring this message of the gospel to you. And also it's a great, great privilege for me to run a prayer uh, right after this broadcast. So also that if you want to be part of that, we have not yet brought it out onto the platform of the, which we are recording. But we are having prayers every time after the broadcast and every day at the midnight watch. If you want to be part of that, it's intentional. It's not something you stumble upon when you're scrolling. No. Send us a message. I'll send you the link. It is well. Shalom. I am Malcolm David. I love you all. May the Lord cause you to praise more because he is worthy of all the praise. Give him all the praise. Give him all the honor. Shalom. 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 Bless you.